Oh, I've been waiting a long time to finally do this build. So this is the Dark Cube from Antec. And to be honest, I've had this case for, uh, for a while. Antec sent it over uh, way back for a build I wanted to do. I always wanted to do a small form factor build for my HTPC. And I got the case and I tried to start putting parts together and you know what happened with the old chip, the chip shortage thing. Getting parts was not possible. Well, times have changed a little bit. You can, you can get parts now. Parts are available. Prices are a little wonky, especially in the GPU sector. But if you want computer parts, at least you can find them. So I dug it back out and we're gonna finally build that HTPC. The motherboard I went with was the ASUS Prime Z790M Plus D4. It's a micro ATX. And the reason I chose this board was it was the only one. I bought all this stuff at the local Micro Center and this was the only Micro ATX Z790 motherboard they had. Now, the big downside to this is that this motherboard does not support DDR5 RAM. So I will be losing a few frames in game, but given this is gonna be an HTPC, I don't really expect that to be a huge problem. When it comes to the CPU, I went back and forth a little bit. Initially, I was going to buy the 13600K just because of how good of a value it is. And then I got to thinking, you know, why don't I just go go all out and get a 39 or a 13900K. And although the 13600K was the smart pick, I decided to go with the 13700K kind of meet in the middle. The RAM I'm gonna be using is Katana 7 Series from Antec. I got four eight gig sticks. It's DDR4, 3600 speed. I think it looks good as well and it'll, it'll match with the uh, aesthetic. For system storage, I'm just gonna start out with one Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte uh, SSD. Should be enough for what I have planned. It's just gonna be a gaming rig. For cooling, Deepcool sent over their Infinity Series LT520. It's a 240 millimeter AIO, and I think it matches the, uh, the color scheme that's going on in this motherboard quite well. Should look pretty cool. So choosing a graphics card for this build was the toughest part for me. So I have an old RTX 2080 Ti sitting in storage, and I think that'll be a good card to use for the time being, at least till the 4070 comes out, the 4080 Ti comes out and we see what happens with the prices. The only issue with this card is it doesn't have HDMI 2.1, so running 4K 120 might not work for me, but I'd rather do this than spend a bunch of money when prices might fluctuate a whole bunch later. So this is a new one for me. I actually decided to boot things up on the box here. Normally I skip this all together. I've only paid for it one time in the past, but you know. Are you sure about that? Funny enough, I actually have a button as well, I think. Is this the power switch? No. Hey, hey, hey! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Huh. Well, I ate my words pretty quick on that one because, yeah, the system. System didn't boot, hit the button, nothing happened. Couldn't even get power to my, my keyboard, but luckily I was not a pleb this time and I built it on this motherboard box before putting it in the case and it saved me a bunch of time. I ended up taking the CPU out of the socket and noticing that the socket had quite a few bent pins. Now I'm 90% sure I didn't do that. However, in full disclosure, I can't be 100% sure because I don't remember paying that much attention to the socket before I put the CPU in initially. But either way, I took it back to Micro Center. Now, normally when you buy a motherboard at Micro Center, they do what's called a pin check where they open it up, make sure everything is in order before you actually take it home. They didn't do that. I didn't even know they did that at the time. So could it have come broken from the factory? Possibly. Either way, I got a new one. We checked the pins on this one. They're good. Put the CPU back in there, all the RAM, hooked it back up, and we have Windows. So now we can configure Windows. We can move forward on this build. And I guess I will always, always boot my system outside the case going forward. I've learned my lesson.
the build is complete. Finally. <laughs> and it's actually, you know, it's, it's exactly what I hoped it would be. The reason I wanted to build an HT PC for forever now is just for this. Sitting on the couch with a wireless keyboard and mouse with my old buddy, my old buddy Coops, even though he's sleeping, and just play some casual games like World of Warships or Heroes of the Storm. Just something like that. And I've, that's what I've been doing the last couple nights, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've actually been playing... Believe it or not, a lot of World of Warcraft. I, I'm not a huge WoW player anymore. I did, I did play it a lot back in the day, like when I was in high school or whatever. But I have this problem that whenever a new expansion comes out, I'm like, nah, what's that about? And I, I buy it. I play for a little bit, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. But I always like to just get in there for at least that nostalgia feel. And playing on a system like this is much, much more immersive. I found that I have an issue when it comes to gaming. Like if I'm playing Overwatch over there, I'm never just playing Overwatch. I'm like... I'll play Overwatch and then between rounds or sometimes during rounds, I got like YouTube up or I'm listening to a podcast or I'm talking on Discord. I'm never just focused on gaming. And with this setup, it's just one TV. So whenever I'm playing World of Warcraft or something like that, I'm just playing that game. I got it on surround sound and it's super immersive. It's super relaxing. And I, I really find myself enjoying gaming over here uh, more so than sometimes over there. Like it wouldn't be the best for like a FPS, but for a game, a casual game, this is like perfect. Now we had issues though. Well, in my build. I've, it seems like I always have issues, but let's not get bogged down with who broke whose motherboard. The takeaway is, is that pins, things got damaged. And um, I, I think it wasn't me. I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. The takeaway is, is that luckily for me, when I bought that motherboard um, from Micro Center, we didn't do a pin check. So we don't know if the pins are broke from the factory. They could be, they could have been broke from the factory. It also could have been me. I don't remember it being me. So I'm going to stick to my guns and say it was uh, broken from the factory. But either way, they replaced the motherboard for free. I dropped it in there, and it works great. I'm also really glad I didn't buy a 4080. I was, going, I was this close, this, this close to buying a 4080, because I want this to also be my, my gaming rig or my VR rig. Uh, and the price was just, it just pushed, pushed me away from it. So I'm glad I didn't do that, because I recently heard that the 4080 price is probably going to drop again. So I would have really been chapped if I would have bought a 4080, only to find the price has been dropped by $200, $300. It'd be a real bummer. And the 2080 Ti has been working great. Also, I got the 4K 120 to work, even though the uh, 2080 Ti doesn't have HDMI 2.1. Using a custom resolution refresh rate, it works, and it's been working great, and I, and I do like it. Building in the, in the dark cube, though, this is the first time I've ever done a small form factor build, and it actually was awesome. I love that you can pull the ins... Where are you going? You just, you just leaving? He's leaving. Oh, this... Uh, you're, okay, you're close. All right, well, that's how he's going to be. Building in the dark cube. I, this is the first time I've ever built in... A small form factor PC and I I really enjoyed it there's way more room than I thought I love that it's an inverted motherboard because that puts the graphics card at the top I really hate that when you build a PC you spend the most money on a graphics card then you just like never see it that's why I normally do a vertical GPU mount but with this since it's inverted you put the graphics card at the top and there's a window up there and you can see right down at your graphics card it's 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 beautiful I really do like it I didn't go crazy with the RGB normally I go over the top with my with my RGB but since this is on the table over by my receiver I don't want it to be super distracting, and it, it looks good. The windows are very tinted, very dark tinted, which I normally don't like, but it blocks most of the light. You can just kind of just barely see the components in there flashing, so you can have a theme, like I got a Christmas theme. But I guess the big takeaway here is at least PC parts are finally available. The prices sometimes aren't the best, but if you want them, they're at least out there. I, I had a lot of these parts, like the case and the RAM, for a long time because I wanted to build this for a long time, and I just couldn't get the parts for it. But now you can. And you can even find used stuff. Like you don't have to get the 4080 at the ridiculous price it is. You can find 2080 Ti's, 3080's, 3070's, any card. You can find any of the old cards online used with, with, with pretty decent prices. So if you want to build a PC, at least you can. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave all the, the links to all these parts in the description below in case you're curious to what, what I use if you missed it. Thank you all for watching. Me and Cooper. Me and Cooper, we'll see you. We'll see you in the next video. You're a good boy.